Today we're going to make a batch of black powder using our mimosa charcoal that we made in a previous video. We're also going to be using potassium nitrate that was ball milled uh, prior to this. And we're also going to be using uh, sulfur that is in a powder form or air float sulfur. The ratios we're going to use for this batch is 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal powder, and 10% sulfur. The first step in the process is to gather all the materials we need in order to make our batch. Uh, we also need to pick a suitable location, uh, preferably outdoors. Um, even though I'm doing this outdoors, I'm still going to be using a respirator. Um, a lot of these fine particles you do not want to get into your lungs. I mean, it can cause a lot of issues. So you need your respirator, your materials, sulfur, charcoal, potassium nitrate, uh, a bucket. I'm gonna be using a screen in order to mix all of the materials, which I'll show you how to do that later. And I've got some uh, lead ball media that I use in my ball mill that I'll be uh, using inside the screen to help mix everything together. The second step in the process is to measure out your materials to get the right ratios before you start mixing it. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna make a 300 gram batch of black powder today. So the ratios of each ingredient is gonna be 225 grams of potassium nitrate, 45 grams of charcoal, and 30 grams of sulfur. So I'm going to use a gram scale, just a basic gram scale, to weigh each of the um, ingredients out. Um, I'm using a coffee filter just to kind of collect those ingredients on the scale. And then as I weigh them out, I'm going to put each of those into a separate bucket. The way I do it is I weigh each of my ingredients separately and then add them to a container. And then I'll use the screen to mix them. You can have issues when trying to mix, trying to weigh them all out at the same time. If you add one ingredient and get the correct um, amount that you need and you start adding another ingredient to it, if you go over on that other ingredient, it gets very hard to separate. So the best way I've found to do it is to mix them all or to weigh them all separately and then add them to another container as you've weighed them out. So this is a relatively easy process. You basically set up your scale, turn it on so that it gets zeroed out you add your uh, container or whatever you're going to be using to contain the ingredients on there and then zero out from there and then you just start adding your ingredients until you reach the required weight alright so I went a little bit over so I need to take some off now if you had other ingredients in here this kind of be a little bit difficult to do but since we're only using one ingredient at a time it makes it a lot easier all right so now that we got one of our ingredients weighed out I'm just gonna add that to a separate container and then that way I can start the process over for the next ingredient So now we're going to add our ingredients and the uh, lead ball media that's going to help us mix everything up. Um, so this process is used uh, to avoid ball milling uh, black powder mixtures or a batch of black powder in the ball mill. So all the ingredients are ball milled separately, then they are mixed together, they're measured out and mixed together as separate ingredients and then mixed um, in this process to sort of avoid any potential sparking or something like that that could happen in the ball mill and uh, create sort of a dangerous situation. I'm just going to use a little bit of the media from the ball mill. Uh, you don't really need a lot, you just want it enough to kind of push all those ingredients through as you shake it up. So now I'm going to go ahead and put on my respirator, so I probably won't be able to talk through this point. But you'll be able to see when I add all the ingredients together why you want to use a respirator for this process. Alright, so let's add all the ingredients together. Just dump them right in there. 
probably can't really see very good right now, but um, once you shake it up and kind of get it mixed in there, you'll be able to see a lot of the stuff coming out. So basically all I do is cover it up. Give it a little shake. And you'll start to hear those that lead media kind of hitting the sides in there. So I still got a little bit more mixing to do. Anything that doesn't really go through there, I usually just discard. So now I'm going to put the, the mixed charcoal batch into a different container and then I'll mix it again. I'll do this process maybe two or three, maybe even four times until I feel like it's really mixed all together very well. You can see that it has more of a consistent color now, kind of like a dark gray. Um, that lets you know it's getting all mixed up. Going to continue this process, like I said, four more times maybe, just to make sure it's really good and mixed. Okay, so now we have our black powder composition. Um, this is just a very basic composition. There's different chemicals you can use, different uh, percentages of ingredients you can use to get different effects. This is gonna be used as a sort of a general purpose lift powder or lift charge for pyrotechnics. And then we're also gonna try to maybe um, get some finer particulates or some finer grains out of it uh, to try to maybe use in like a muzzle loader or something like that just to see its properties. But um, there's a couple other things you need to do to this before you can use it in those applications. Um, there's a process called corning. So my camera cut out for some reason, uh, but basically what I was talking about was the two different processes that you can go, you go through after you actually mix the, the black powder. Um, first process is called corning, and the second process is called granulation or granulating. Uh, the black powder. Corning is where you take the black powder, you add a little bit of moisture to it, and then you compress it in uh, some type of press. Um, and it ends up making sort of like a little hockey puck uh, type thing where um, you, once it's pressed, you let it dry and it becomes very, very hard. Once it's completely dried, you break it up either through putting it through a grinder or like smashing it with a hammer or something like that, and you get very uh, different sized um, particles which you can kind of sift through different screens and get different sizes of grains. Um, if you're doing any type of muzzle loading or um, using it for different types of like rifle firing um, you probably want to go that route. Uh, it's, it makes a much better much faster powder and um, the corning process I've heard a lot of people who do use it for muzzle loading um, is much better. The process that I use is called granulating or granulation, and it's basically where you take your black powder and then you mix in a little bit of alcohol or water or a combination of both. You kind of get like a Play-Doh type consistency or like a clay ball consistency. And then you can either cut it to make like stars for um, fireworks or you 
do it even finer, you push it through uh, a mesh screen, a basically a metal screen to get very specific uh, size granules for what you're going to use it for. So after that process, once you let it dry, those little pieces, those little granules become very hard and you can even kind of squeeze them between your fingers and they don't turn back into powder. Once you go through one of those processes, either corning or granulation, the powder becomes very, very fast. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate that real quick. All right, so we're just going to do just a very small amount just so you can kind of get an idea. Anytime you introduce flame or you start working with black powder, you only get out the amount that you're going to be working with to accomplish whatever task it is you're trying to do. Whether it's making like pyrotechnic implements or um, using it black powder in like a muzzle loader or something. Always seal the container and then move this container away somewhere else so it won't catch on fire. All right, here we go. All right, so that doesn't seem very impressive, but if you got a big pile of that, it's gonna go up, it's very hot. Like I said, once you kind of go through the corning or the graining process, it's gonna be much, much faster. Okay, just as a comparison, uh, I'm also gonna show you what the uh, grained black powder does. Um, so this is actually the finished lift charge that I'd be using uh, for lifting shells or other devices, other pyrotechnic devices. Again, I'm just going to be doing just a very little bit, not much at all, just for demonstration. And you can kind of see these are sort of more like grains, uh, like kind of like little cubes. Um, and they're in this form, they're very, very hard. You can press on them and they don't fall apart, they don't turn back into powder. Um, they stay as, as sort of very specific size grain. Again, seal up the container and move it away. All right, here we go. All right, so we're gonna do this one more time. My camera turned off for some reason right after I got done igniting it. So let's do this one more time and then we'll talk about it. All right, so as you can see, it as soon as you put the flame on it, it goes. That's that's what I'm talking about when I say it's faster. Once you've corned it or grained it, um, it becomes much, much faster. As soon as that spark or fire gets to it, it the whole thing ignites at once, pretty much. Um, and that's what you're really looking for with uh, the final product for any type of lift charge or for uh, muzzle loaders or anything like that. Oh, <laughs>